Alright, so in today's video, I'm going to show you all how to clean a uh, Briggs & Stratton Auto Choke on a 550EX and up model carburetor. This is what it looks like. It is plastic, it is composite, and right there is the uh, Briggs & Stratton part number, if you can read that. Now these can be cleaned sometimes. This one here, I'm yet to take apart. Um, so we're going to rip it apart and clean it. If I can clean it, I'll do a video on how to replace the carburetor. So what you're going to need is a 7 millimeter socket, 6 point. And uh, before you take these screws out, get you something to mark with. And what you want to do is mark how this lines up. So you want to do this. Mark a line, just like that, and then mark another line or something like it. I usually do an arrow. Something like that. And then just a, a line like that. Or something like that. Just scratch you in like a little pattern like that. That way you know what weight goes on. Because if you put the float bowl on wrong, then it'll work. So, what we're going to do, take 7 millimeter ratchet. You can also use a wrench. And we'll put it on here and we're going to unscrew these. Sometimes you can get them by hand. Don't take them out all the way yet. First what you want to do is get them loose. The good thing about these composite plastic carburetors is they will not corrode and uh, be non-cleanable like the uh, predecessor to the 550EX, the Quantum engine. So there are our two 7 millimeter screws. Now this won't just pop right off. This is where you have to be careful. You can take your screwdriver or something that's flat blade and get right in here like this. See here? And this tool ain't going to cut it. So we have to take a screwdriver. Doesn't matter if it's clean or dirty. There is a gasket so you have to be careful. And we're going to get it right down in here like this. We're going to twist twist and we just pried it up and you see that little gasket right here that you don't want to hit yeah I messed it up a little bit right there but that's perfectly fine so now you can wiggle it and finagle it this one here is full of water um, to tell if you have water in the gas just look at the float bowl see all them bubbles that's water and you can see down in here in the float bowl and you see what's running out right there that's water. And you can look on the ground where I just emptied it. Let me loosen up the camera here to where it'll rotate. See there? Gas would evaporate. That's water. So that means all I gotta do is basically get all the water out, spray it out. But I'm gonna take apart this whole entire carburetor. I'm gonna grab the float pin pull it completely out just like that and we're going to take a float out and that's where our needle seat is you can just see all the water inside here now there's a middle jet right here a lot of times you can grab them like this pull them straight out that one's going to have to take some prying if you mess this center jet up you're going to be buying a whole new carburetor do you have to take it out to clean it? yes Sometimes you can pop them out, but what I like to do is set them on the side like this with a screwdriver. There it went out. See there? That's all you got to do is pry it out, and that's where a lot of the crud is, is up in that center jet. You can see this is just nothing but water, you know. Nor won't run off water, so you take your carburetor cleaner, you spray this out. Just give it a good spray and uh, set it aside somewhere clean. Take a float bowl. Do the same. This carburetor cleaner will get the water off. You can even let that sit in there for a little bit. Then you take the carburetor and you can see right through there is your main jets. Um, we've got three main jets. And this one right here is going to be the Venturi tube. 
you can see right there my carburetor nozzle so that tube's going this one here is going to be that there's going to be another jet and this one here a little bit smaller there's one other thing you want to do to these carburetors and I'll show you now this right here is a welding torch tip cleaner so you're going to find the smallest one in this case is going to be this bent one right here and you're going to take it and you're going to take this plastic piece here and it's got all these holes in it and I'll spray it off one more time you can take this it's a little bit too big for this one here but you see right up in there is a center jet and another center jet another center jet this middle one is going to do this keep in mind this is plastic so don't you know do too much and that's basically it just check the o-rings and when you're done cleaning it out spray it off because you see this one's got dirt and stuff all on it and I don't want the camera to get hit with carburetor cleaner because lenses do, do not like that here's another tip you can do take a nozzle of the carburetor cleaner to really clean it out and you can you can do that see there how it's coming out and then to put this back in it'll only go in one way so it's not going in that way but it will go in this way and you just got to press it down until it clicks so do like this and you'll hear it pop and you spray it off walk out around a little make sure there's no more water in it don't put carburetor cleaner out of it or mop it up don't throw it out in the yard um, carburetor cleaner is mainly acetone there's a bunch of other stuff too but it will evaporate don't get it on you because it will burn well, this carburetor here is pretty much ready to be assembled. Alright, so the carburetor is ready to go back together, so we're going to take our float, plastic float, so be careful with it. We're going to spray it off. Spray that needle valve too. We're going to take a needle valve and we're going to hook it in here like this. Make sure there's no crud on it. We're just going to drop it in. Just like that. And then you take your float pin, this is where it gets tricky. A lot of times, if you do this the old fashioned way, push down on it, clip it in. It's not going to hurt nothing. So our float is in now. You see it is working. Uh -oh. You see it is working. So we're going to find our mark on the float bowl, which is right here. There's our little arrow that we drew. You can also use a paint pin. We're going to take our carburetor, we're going to put it on just like this, and now you got to press it in. Press it in. Make sure that them tabs line up, make sure the gasket's seated, and you're ready to put screws in. Do not tighten one side and then tighten the other side. Tighten them equally to prevent cracking or to prevent messing up the... Uh, threads or the carburetor because these ears will break off and these carburetors are not cheap. Now sometimes they cannot be cleaned. You can get a rebuild kit or you can get a whole new carburetor. Um, I didn't tighten that one all the way down. It might have looked like it but I didn't. But you can get a rebuild kit which is basically just the gaskets. I believe it comes with a float, a needle valve, a needle seat and that center jet. Um, you can go on my website and find all that. They're not a very popular item. So now we're going to tighten up this side. You don't want to over tighten it because you'll break it. You just want to get it snug just like that until you feel some resistance. We're going to tighten this side up now. See, I did not tighten it up. So, that is how you take apart and put back together and clean out the Briggs and Stratton 500EX, uh, 550EX series. Uh, carburetor that's a that's a drain plug good luck getting them out i've stripped them out many a time
So now in the next video, I'm going to put this carburetor on a push mark that I know has a bad carburetor because it will not run and I've cleaned it three times. And we're going to see if I did clean this carburetor. So, see you in the next video.